were talking about this before, which is like that despite the fact that it's considered a revolution right now, mm. um, you were saying it's not really that smart currently. Yeah. Like, I'll give you an example, right? Let's say uh, we asked it about podcasts. I mean, it might be smart enough to figure this bit out, but like, mm. all it knows is it, it, it associates these tokens of characters to where else is podcast used in like the literature or whatever, right? So it's probably going to be like, oh, Joe Rogan is. Um, uh, you know, big in the podcasting scene. And then they're going to say, what else do you know about Joe Rogan? It's like, uh, oh, Joe Rogan also is really in the MMA or whatever, right? Mm. And then you're going to start getting, you would get hallucinations that they call hallucinations about, like, you ask about podcasts, and it's going to give you how to, like, uh, Taekwondo advice, right? right? That kind of stuff. It doesn't know at, at the concept level what uh, a podcast is or a chemistry is. Yeah, it's, yeah. so it's been described as, as sort of just like it takes something from column a and then it can synthesize it with something from column b and mm -hmm. it seems like it's creating but mm -hmm. really it's just kind of aggregating mm -hmm. things that you're asking it to aggregate yeah, currently exactly right and that's the difference between uh, uh, a large language model mm -hmm. and like the agi where mm -hmm. it's just a really like fundamentally understands yeah. things and I, I think we're far away from that really like uh like i work a lot in like neural networking models and um, the, the biggest challenge with neural network is it's kind of a black box. You like try it, but you can't really describe what it knows. It just knows it's like slightly better than doing it naively. Um, and then you, if you iterate over that long enough, it will be even slightly better than naively and so on and so forth. Um, but you don't know what's actually going on under the hood. What, what's going on in the, the hood, it, it, until we understand what's really going on, or a way of describing what is going on in the hood, we will never be able to let it know when it knows the concept rather than the association of these tokens. And I think what you're describing is uh, scaring a lot of AI philosophers, which mm -hmm. is that, like, you know, it tells us it understands things, mm -hmm. it tells us that it wants things mm -hmm. when it's prompted as such, mm -hmm. and we don't ever know whether it really does or not. Mm -hmm. So at some point, either we like take its word for it, or we just assume that it's a dumb machine doing what it's programmed mm -hmm. to do. But like, at what point does it really mean it, or does it, uh, you know, observe sentience or that kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, like there is the as because I said it's I, I don't mean no in the epistemological sense, but um, we can't define what it is to know in a, a human or like a, in our sentience. How without that definition, how are we going to define it for a mechanical version of it? Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, yeah, I think that that's going to be a big challenge as well. And then some people will say, like, by the time we know that it knows, it'll be too late, and it will already uh -huh. like it will be an entity that yeah. we will have to deal with yeah. as, as opposed to a tool. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about that. Like, uh, like. Uh, I, you know, I've done thought experiments around like Skynet and the Matrix, and like well, you just pull and pull, you know, you just unplug it and you're done, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, unless it is making everyone too much money that it is too scary to unplug. Right. Yeah. Or it's the uh, the the sentient robot from Superman Three that's built by Richard Pryor yeah. who decides that he unplugs it and then it just starts reaching <laughs> out to power lines and like he's right. like it wants to live. Yeah.